Good enough. Okay, as soon as I turn that one on, we're good to go. All right, Paul, we're on. Okay. We're with Ray Hinton here now, 19, mid 1970s, back in the leather helmet area stays back in my days. Holy cow. Ray, first of all, thanks for taking time to come out. Uh, we've been uh, sharing stories and memories for the last 48 hours. It's been a blast just to listen to everybody's feelings. One of the things, and, and you go back to the early days of the Chris Keys Monero, so you've had a chance to experience it. And one thing that Dr. Spiker and, and Coach Giesman created was this thing, which is going to be a big part of what our book is going to be about, and it's, it's, it's called the Penn Way. Now, as an older adult, you may have a different viewpoint on what the Penn Way is now, but as a high schooler, and as you can recall back, uh, tell me about what the Penn Way means to you. Uh, well, I was fortunate to be in the program to begin with and when Coach Giesman got there and his staff because he brought in a great staff. Um, so in ninth grade out of Grissom, uh, Coach Mark and Coach Anson and Giesman had been there for a couple years and we were at Grissom and he brought the pin system down to the ninth grade junior high level. So we learned it early. Um, and the pin system is learning to win, being prepared to win, and teaching you how to win. And I think back of, uh, and I had extended and played, you know, uh, had a pretty good career in college, but I think back to all the players that weren't as talented and played hard and were hard-nosed. And the biggest thing about uh, pin football, I think, is the hard-nosed football. We were taught how to play the game right. We were taught legally, this is how you block. You can't block with your face in the numbers anymore and, and tackle the same way. But we were taught that way. And um, it, it'll always, if somebody asks me about pin football, or if somebody asks me about my football career in general, you know, because I played at Ball State, 44 straight games, went to the Oakland Raiders. Mm -hmm. First thing I say is pin football. I played at Penn. Um, and another interesting story is when I played in North South All Star game, um, and I got there, and I was amazed at the kids that didn't know anything, didn't understand leverage, didn't understand, and it was like well, somebody was teaching me something. And the other thing, Ron Fellows from Washington, mm -hmm. who I became friends with, he was at the North-South All-Star game. And of course, he went on and played, I think, 10 years at the Dallas Cowboys, safety or corner. And uh, at the North-South All-Star game, he comes up to me and goes, you guys have been hit. And I was amazed. And of course, I wasn't playing. I was tight end, so I would, wasn't playing. And I never hit him, probably. And then again in 2014, when I go to the Hall of Fame induction every year, because I was inducted in 2006, and Ron Fellows got inducted, and he came up to me again and said, Hey, Ray, I remember you guys from Penn Hit. And this is a guy who played in the NFL for 10 years. So, you know, it's a, I think that's one of the things with foot, uh, Penn football. And like I said, all the players, I don't care if you didn't play much, you played a lot. You still, pin football is everything. One thing that uh, Chris did early on is he established the two platoon system. He tells the story that, you know, that they, he just felt that bringing that system over from Ohio was gonna be best suited to start the program. So in the early stages, the two platoon uh, uh, was new, obviously. More kids are getting more involved. People are more excited about football. Can you? speak to the the fact about how important the two platoon system was in the early days of the Giesman era. Well I think one thing I think we did have enough players to make that work at Penn um, and it's funny because I played linebacker my south, sophomore year and my love is defense and of course Giesman, Coach Giesman made me play tight end but while I was playing tight end 
I was also working with defense. Oh, you're going to be a pass rusher. We're going to put you in. So I would, you know, it kept my hopes up, I guess. <laughs> but so, but I never went in to a game and, and played a defensive pass rusher. But no, I think we had enough players to do it. Like I said, uh, we had a lot of talent, and everybody um, played the position. They were taught the position. And like I said, when I went to the All Star game and saw these guys, and I'm thinking, what are they doing here? You know, they have no clue. So I think. All right, let's talk about the, the camaraderie in Chris's staff early on it, while he was there. And I mean, the group just seemed to get along really well. So let's talk about the coaching staff. Oh, I love the coaching staff. Um, and I believe it was Coach Wagner, the offensive line coach when I was there. My sophomore year early, um, it was one of those things, I had a, the blocking sled, and I did it, he's talking about getting your hips in and doing it, and all of a sudden it just hit me, leverage. And you, you don't understand, I, I don't think until, because there's a lot of players that never, they never get it. Um, and when you think of Coach Lori, who was down at Blackford, went down there, I think, believe won a state championship. While I was at Ball State, who came and visited me at Ball State all the time. Um, and of course, Mr. Yeoman, uh, Coach Yeoman, I never actually, because he was defensive back, so I never actually, but the whole coaching staff, he brought in uh, people that knew what were going on um, and could get people to listen. And apparently we did, and pin football did. Uh, talking with Corey, Corey talks about watching the younger, uh, when he was younger, and at this stage he was younger, watching you guys play and the impact that you guys were having on the next generation that was coming up, which eventually led to where we are here today as one of the greatest football programs in the history of American tackle football in our country. So do you ever think of back on the fact that you guys were the the seedlings to this great program. Um, there was a lot of them, yeah. But there was a lot of them, and Coach Giesman always says this story about we saw these ninth graders out at Grissom, and there was about four or five of us that were decent sized kids, and uh, we are. But there's a whole group of them. Every year it was a new class. Every year they went through the same thing. They were taught to play football, and they played it well. The emphasis that uh, on the detail work that the coaching staff, uh, that Chris kind of set the tone in on how they were going to go about doing that, uh, to me that seems to have set them apart from other coaching staff is their attention to detail. As a player, you think about your position coach and you think about as a guy who played college football and then they had national football, like, can you even imagine how ahead of the game they were at the time you were playing high school football? Oh, I definitely do. I think at that time, and like I said, going to the North-South All-Star game and seeing what these guys have been taught and wondering what they're doing here. And there were some great athletes. There were better athletes than me that I'm sure they played some in college but never did what I did. Um, it, yeah, the, the what we learned, I, I mean, footwork, stuff, and like I was talking about leverage and seeing people at that North-South All-Star game and at Ball State when I went there, they have no clue. And we were, we were ahead, and I think Corey can probably uh, say that they have, other teams have caught up to what Penn did, which is, uh, with, in my case, 40 years ago, because I was 77, every, <laughs> or, uh, 40 years, 77 reunions this summer. As you reflect back on uh, the stories, high school kids, uh, they have a great memory of things, that, the silly things that happen. And, uh, and I want you to share a couple of your favorite Penn stories. It may be a funny story, it may be a serious story. Uh, you've got them all stuck up there in your cranium uh, and you're laughing about it now so you know a couple of them. So why don't you share some, some of those favorite Penn stories with us? Well, I'll, I'll tell you one. I think it was probably my Senior year, and it probably was a Thursday because we were coming off 
the game field. So that was probably a Thursday practice. Practice, and I'm watching, walking along with Coach Giesman, and he goes, "Hitting, you know, downfield block, you're not getting a scholarship." And I kind of laughed to myself, and uh, and I, it must have been towards the end because I didn't get offered a scholarship till the, I think the season was over. So I went to the North South All Star Game, and uh, never. Never caught a pass, but late in the game, Roy Thomas, who I think was from East Chicago, and went to Ball State, I knew him later, uh, broke a long one, and I went down and just killed a defensive back about 40 yards down the field, and Roy Thomas cut back and scored a touchdown. And I thought, this is fun, downfield blocking. <laughs> and, and granted, he scored a touchdown because I blocked, but I killed the kid. So from then on, it was, and I still, every time I see Giesman, I or when I see him, I forget to tell him that. But it was like, this is great. You can downfield block. Hopefully, your back's going to cut off you and score a touchdown, and you can kill a, def a defenseless uh, DB. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? What other, what other favorite story that pops into your mind? Um, <laughs> I don't know. You got, you got a favorite uh, interaction with the coach story? Oh, that was kind of it. I, um... All right. Let's talk about your relationship with 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 the coaching staff. It's obvious that you still have a great relationship with with Corey and. Obviously, his dad was a big impact in the many lives of the Penn boys that were here that we've had a chance to visit with. But give us an idea as you look at these guys now, you know, 40 years. I mean, and they're still doing it. They'll, they'll, it's, somewhere along the line, even the New York Yankees had a drop-off. There's, there's been no drop-off in 40-plus years. This is a crazy thing when you think about it. Well, I think it's a, a great tribute to Corey, and I've heard him say it. In newspaper and that he tried to carry on and keep that tradition and and certain things and some things have to change because of the way the times are sure but Corey I think has done a great job keeping the program where it was and it being top-notch every year and that's nobody can say that look at Mishawaka and you look at and everything changes as far as the students um, enrollment and all that, but it's amazing, and I, uh, and thanks to Corey. One final thing, uh, I've had, talked to a lot of coaches. Um, Greg Madison was with us here earlier, talked about the importance of his son playing in the, in the Penn system, and you know, working under these coaches. Brian talked about high school football, his Penn experience was more important than his college experience and, and in the NFL experience. You played all three. Does the high school Penn experience uh, the greatest memory in your mind, football-wise? Yeah, definitely. Um, we've got kind of an elaborate bar in our breezeway, and I've got awards, uh, offensive lineman awards, and all kinds of stuff from Ball State and Most Valuable Player and but what the only awards I have hung up is I've got a pin helmet, um, my plaque for induction into Hall of Fame, my Oakland contract, and a Ball State jersey in the back. But the pin helmet is right in front. So it is it is most important. <laughs>